girls. We are happy that you have joined us for this Activate Her teaching. We are um, starting a series of videos that we are going to be concentrating on hashtag be you and what it means to be you and activating your true identity in Christ. So amen. Amen to that. Um, this month we are focusing on be you transformed. So Good Ali word. and I have spent um, the last few weeks uh, studying some scriptures that she picked out. And um, so right now what we're doing is we're just bringing what the Lord has shown us individually, bringing it to the table, sharing it, kind of using each other as a sounding board and um, sharing with you what the Lord has shown us. And hopefully um, we are trusting that he is going to speak to you in all of that too. So and Colleen's going to yeah. get us started with um, some thoughts here. Well, our verse that we took... Um, decided would be our monthly uh, verse was from Romans 12 2. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, from the Passion Translation, it says to stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Um, and that really is what a Christian, what we should have our goal set towards, our, our passion. We should be all about that, living the empowered life mm -hmm. that God has planned for mm -hmm. us. Beautiful, satisfying in his eyes. Mm -hmm. that it, yeah, funny to me that, you know, when you, we started on this verse and I, um, I'm, where a lot of us are familiar with the the beginning of it, it talks about the transformation of our uh, renewing of our mind, but it's the whole second half of it is full of huge promises that right. we kind of gloss over. So it was, right. and that's really his will for us is um, is is encapsulated in this verse. So. Yeah, I love how they trans uh, they they translated the that. Yeah, yeah. Um, because a lot of translations use the word conform. Mm -hmm. So I looked up the dictionary definition of con, uh, conform, and it's defined as to be similar or identical, to be in agreement or harmony, to be obedient or compliant, and to act in accordance with prevailing standards or customs. And so it's funny that the word says that you have to go against everything that we feel like we're supposed to do. And... The Passion Translation, their footnote, said that what this verse is actually saying is don't be squeezed into the mold of this present age. Mm -hmm. And so it is, isn't it, um, it's ironic to me that the Word of God is saying don't be squeezed into this mold, mm -hmm. don't conform, don't be similar or identical yeah, right. to anybody else, mm -hmm. don't be in agreement or harmony with things that oppose the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard and it's difficult in the society and this culture yeah, that we live in. It's terrible pressure. It is. It's a constant squeezing. It's a constant mm -hmm. fitting into the mold of what the world says instead of it's the very opposite of what the yeah. word, of what this is telling us here. So, yeah. We yeah, we, it's, it can be very trying, mm -hmm. I think, in our everyday life to stay one step ahead mm -hmm. of... Um, in our minds, mm -hmm. to be where God wants us to be, and and not allow the uh, our minds to be shaped and molded mm -hmm. by what the news tells us, or what society tells us, or what Facebook tells Facebook us. tells us, what the next thing, the next new fad tells us, mm -hmm. the next diet, what that tells us. We have to be so careful, um, and when we allow ourselves to step away from that culture then that, that's where the transformation starts mm -hmm. starts and i looked up the word transformed from the greek and it um is equivalent to metamorphosis which is what what do you yeah. think of when you think of that you think of that caterpillar that changed into a butterfly yep mm -hmm. and that's exactly what god wants to do for us um i read a story about um what's his name brian welch he was a lead singer of the music group corn and he left a $23 million contract when he became a born-again Christian because he felt God said, I want you to step away from that, to spend time in my word and get to know me. Mm -hmm. And he did that. He left $23 million in a contract and he was gone for eight years. 
And it's not like we can all step away from mm -hmm. life. We can't really realistically do that, unless, of course, you make $23 million. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I liked how that compared to the caterpillar getting into a cocoon. Mm -hmm. um, how God said, get away, and when you're ready, then I'm going to release you mm -hmm. to come out, and you'll come out different. And that's exactly what happened to him. Mm -hmm. God actually brought him back now, he, and he picked up the place that he was. He went back to the group, and he continues on. But it was an eight-year break where he went into a cocoon with the Lord. It was him and the Lord, mm -hmm. and he allowed God to transform his thinking mm -hmm. and his mindset Everything about him became different. And now he travels with this group and they sing these songs about pain. And he said that now he shares the answer to the pain. Before, mm -hmm. he wasn't sharing the answer to the pain. He didn't mm -hmm. know the answer to the pain that right. he was talking about. Mm -hmm. But now he can share that. And I just, I thought it was the greatest story. Yeah, well, you, you've had a similar season in your life. I where, did. Yeah. Yep. So talk a little bit about that. Well, your life. I... I refer to it really as my season of death. It was a, a season where I felt like the Lord just started taking things away from me. He took friends out of my life. Sometimes um, when you go into cocoon, he removes people from your life. So I, I lost friends um, that I felt God, now I look back and I can say they were good removals. You know, uh, they were necessary. For that time. For yeah. that time. I think sometimes we fear losing people like it's a bad thing um, because we can hold on so tightly to mm -hmm. relationships. Um, uh, he even took away my car. I had a car accident and I wasn't working at the time. So we said, well, we don't really need an extra car. for." So for a whole year, I didn't even have a car. Right. And that season was a time where I had to dig into God's word and it really was a time where I spent studying his word and he began to transform everything about my mind and the way I thought about things, the way I saw things, and really the way that I saw myself. Mm -hmm. And it was out of that season that I began to recognize that my identity was in all the wrong things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. So yeah. and because such of fruit has come, such fruit has come out of that time of your life. Oh such yeah, fruit, you know, you wrote, you know, the book and yeah. the writing and the and um, and now the being able to share and the speaking engagements you've had, you know, it all makes a difference yeah. really yeah. when you set aside that time. Yeah, and I think the thing is not being afraid. I think sometimes we become afraid of what God might show us and what he might reveal to us mm -hmm. in that time. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't want to get into the word of God because I might, he might tell me I have to let go of something. He might mm -hmm. tell me I have to change. Mm -hmm. And we fear that because we think we got it so good right now. I know. But the truth is we really don't. Yeah, and if, you don't know it until you have the bad. You know, he, you've got good or you've got bad, but you He's got even more than better. He's got best for you. Right. You know, and, and not all of that season was pretty. <laughs> I mean, that no, was an ugly season that really was for a, you. It was and a painful season. It, yeah, and you really had to face a lot, you know, a lot of um, just truths about the way you, your thinking has yep. been, you know, the patterns of your mind. And you really, and, it, and it's hard to come to a place where you say, okay, I'm wrong there. Yeah. I've been wrong all this time about the way I'm thinking. And, um, and it's not easy, and, and it is a dying, it's a death, it's a dying to self thing. It yeah. sure is. Yeah. It, it's definitely dying to self. And, it, and one thing that comes out of that um, was, well, one thing that came out of that for me was recognizing the fact that my belief determined my behavior. That's right. And so sometimes my behavior was not the best. Mm -hmm. Most most of the time my behavior was not the best <laughs> because my belief system was wrong. Mm -hmm. I believed wrong things about people. Mm -hmm. I believed wrong things about myself. Mm -hmm. And I believed wrong things about God. Right. Yeah. So if our belief system determines our behavior, then we need to stop mm -hmm. and ask ourselves, well, what is my behavior like? Right. Yeah, and you were limiting yourself. Yep. 
because your your beliefs were limited. Yep. And based on wrong behavior. Wrong and the wrong or truth. The wrong, the wrong truth. truth yeah. You were basing it on what you had learned or felt or thought or been that told the world, or been mm -hmm. told or the world had taught you. And you and, and what in that process that you went through, you just changed that be, your beliefs from the that thinking, those patterns to started to base your beliefs yep. on the word of God and what the word God has said about you. Yep. And so therefore your behavior changed. Yeah. So so let's take a break. Okay. Let's let let's girls, let's take a few minutes and let's give let's talk um, um, amongst ourselves, like in your small groups, um, where are you limiting? Right. Where might you be limiting yourself because of thought patterns, beliefs, um, attitudes, old habits? Mm -hmm. um, where might you be limiting yourself because they're based on the wrong thing? So take a few minutes and then we'll come back.
Welcome back, girls. We hope you had a great discussion. I know it's not always easy to talk about strongholds. It's not always easy to uh, acknowledge what needs to be broken down. Um, and if you're like me, you probably can have a pretty good imagination sometimes. Um, we're going to offer you an activation plan, and I don't think that there's any better way to present you with an activation plan than by giving you the Word of God, the Word of God and a good instruction. In Proverbs 4, 5, it says, Get wisdom, develop good judgment, don't forget my words or turn away from them, don't turn your back on wisdom, for she will protect you, love her, and she will guard you. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. I love the fact that it's all about wisdom right there. And I really appreciate the fact that just like a, a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and it takes time to transform in that while well, in the cocoon, that God doesn't say, okay, I give you 24 hours to tr change your mind, your thought process, and everything mm -hmm. about your behaviors. Mm -hmm. I appreciate the fact that God says, um, it's going to be a, over time. A process. It's a process that you go through. But I really appreciate this word right here, develop. Mm -hmm. Develop good judgment. And I think one of the ways, I know the only way to develop good judgment is by getting into the word of God. And as we begin to develop, then our belief system changes because now we're believing on God's truth instead of our own truth. And instead of what the world tells us so our belief system changes and then from that a new process begins where our behavior begins to change mm -hmm. so belief determines behavior as our belief um, as our minds are transformed because of our time in the Word of God so is our behavior mm -hmm. and you came to the table today with a great list from Ephesians and your time in the Word mm -hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about yeah, the well, strongholds just, there. Um, yeah, I just thought there was this was a great comparison um, between um, our old habits, of trading the old habits for um, this new identity that we uh, have inherited. So um, some of they are strongholds because you Bart, you'll recognize we already talked about anger. Mm -hmm. So one of them does talk about putting. Um, uh, away sinful anger or rage so instead of that we're going to come back with um, we're going to reconcile quickly so when we um, when we have um, lost it on, uh -huh. <laughs> on an occasion yeah um, we're going to come back quickly and reconcile um, put off falsehood which is just deceit so lying can be huge um, a huge habit on old that we are to put away and um, and be truthful instead um, Unwholesome talk. This is a one that I'm convicted on. Sometimes, a lot of times, we talk about different things that it's just not wholesome. It's not for anybody's benefit. Um, so, to putting away unwholesome talk and, and speaking only words that build um, right. is a good is a good um, new habit. So, there's a whole list. I mean, there's probably 20 things here that that we're to to the word of habits that we're to leave behind and begin to um, step into these new uh, habits of our new identity. And um, I was thinking a lot about our new identity and um, talk, thinking about how, you know, how it just, um, we're so ready and willing to conform our thinking to the world's and what other people say. Mm -hmm. Why can we not be that willing to receive the new identity that Christ died to give us right you know why if God said that we're worthy are we so willing to believe the world that says we're not right you know and if God That's said good. yeah if God says God said we are enough you know why are we so willing to believe others when they say we're not right know? and um, and I think it's a great question to ask and I thought about you know it's not even like this is a new identity um, it's the original identity that God created us right. to have. It's how he sees us. It's how he sees us. He sees us perfected in it. Mm -hmm. um, and it, and he's, this is how he saw us when he formed us or before he formed us in our, our mother's wombs. Yeah. You know, so it's not, it's not even like it's not ours. I mean, it was ours before everything else, before we wore everything else that the world tried to, 
to tell us that we are yep. uh, or aren't. So, um, you know, and I just, this was a, I mean, it's just a good challenge in my own mind. Um, you know, why are we so willing to, um, to believe the world and people well, around us. And, and uh, when you talk about that, it just makes me think about the fact that the translation, the Passion Translation says, don't be squeezed into the mold of this present age. And that's exactly what all of those things are doing. They're telling us we're not, and we're being squeezed into this mold. There's no life there. We're having the life just squozing right out of us. Is squozing a word? <laughs> I think it I think it should be. <laughs> squeezed? What is the right word? Probably squeezed. squeezed. We're having the life just squeezed right out of us. When the Word of God in all of this, there's this is life and this is freedom for us. Yes. And this is where it is. I mean, this is the key. This yep. is the key to our transformation, to the renewing of our mind. This Word, our, this Scripture, the Bible, yep. Jesus and the word of God is living and active. Yep. And and don't ask me how he does it, but he uses it to change our thinking. And we can go to other sources and we can read other things, but there's something about the written and the spoken mm -hmm. word of God that transforms our minds. Yep. And that's the key. So, um, yeah, yeah, we've got to get to a place where we say, I'm... I'm willing, God, and I'm ready to take the cocoon adventure and wrap myself up in your word and allow your word to transform me. Um, one of my favorite quotes that I heard years ago, so, and I don't know who said it, but they said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you always mm -hmm. got. Mm -hmm. And we're so afraid to let God's word change us because we're afraid to lose something but yet, most of us can say in honesty, "I don't like this part. I don't like. I don't like this aspect or this place in my life right now. I don't like where, whatever it is, this area, this stronghold. I don't like this stronghold. Let's just call it what it is. It's a stronghold. I don't like this stronghold, and I want to be. I want to be free from this stronghold. The only way that you're going to be free from that stronghold." is to allow God to do what Romans 12, 2 says from the Passion. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. That's for each one of us. Stop doing it. Stop imitating the ideals and the culture around you. Be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He can and will convict us when our mind is headed in the wrong direction. That's what he wants to do. He'll convict us of that. And so we have to let him. He wants to totally reform the way we think. Mm -hmm. He's got a total reformation in store for us mm -hmm. if we let him give him permission and say, Holy Spirit, have at it. Start with my mind. Start with my thinking. When I have a bad thought, when I have a wrong thought, when it's not in alignment with the Word of God, I need you to point it out right away. Mm -hmm. And don't second guess it. Mm -hmm. Oh, was that the Holy Spirit? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I just told a lie. Hmm. We don't have to second guess that. We know that Chrissy just shared that we need to put off lying. So we have to be willing to say, okay, Holy Spirit, have at it. Tell me. I'm, I'm ready. And then from that place, when we finally get to a point where we're willing to set that aside, mm -hmm. from that place, the Word of God says, this is what's going to empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. Mm -hmm. I want to be perfect in God's eyes. I don't have to be perfect in anybody else's eyes. Mm -hmm. What we have to be perfect in is God's eyes. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. That's right. So, girls, our challenge to you at this point, then, is to make the Word part of your everyday life so that, and to and come to that place where you're willing to subject yourself to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to begin to, uh, the process of renewing mm -hmm. your mind and um, beginning the transformation that you are asking for. So, um, 
So, and that's yeah. our... Well, I just was going to say 2019 can be a year of transformation. And I believe that that's what God really wants for each one of us is to take 2019 and make it a year of transformation. And then keep a journal every day throughout the year. And then let's look back mm -hmm. in December. Let's read our journals and, and see what God see has done. What God has done. Mm -hmm. That's right. So okay. remember, right. belief determines behavior. And we want behavior that glorifies God. Mm -hmm. We want you to be you. 